What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of The Daily Draft, brought to you by Badger State Brewing in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Badger State is just minutes away from beautiful Lambeau Field. We are very, very excited to talk to you today about a player that I have number one in his position in my rankings, and not only that, it is a it is a position of, of a pretty serious need for the Green Bay Packers, and that is linebacker, and I am talking about NC State's Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson is a very exciting prospect, but he does not come without his caveats, and that's why even though he is my number one player, um, it's and I'm, I'm, I guess, giving it up right here at the beginning, but I mean, he has a mid-second round grade for me, and no linebacker has a higher one um, in this class. Peyton Wilson, the first thing that jumps off with you, uh, when you when you watch him play is he's a big guy. He's big and he's long. Um, and I think he has some room to add some thickness and you just look even just so simply at like his relative athletic score card and Peyton Wilson has 96th or 98th percentile height. I can't read the six or the eighth there, but you know, he is an eighth of an inch from being six, four, that is big, tall, long for a off ball linebacker. You know, most guys are six, one, six, two, I would say like six, two, two thirty is, is, is sort of the NFL norm. Now that the league is getting slightly smaller. But 6'4 is big no matter what era you're talking about. However, he has 49th percentile weight, meaning that he just has average weight for a linebacker at 233. So I think he can get to 245 without losing a step. Now, that's conjecture. There's no proof of that. But, I, I mean, I could see him being 96th percentile height with 70th percentile weight without much of a problem, right? So I think, I mean, I think there is some room to grow physically, in, in adding weight um, and strength. I don't need, I don't think he needs to be as thin as he is uh, to continue on. And, and, and frankly, being 233, it's not like he's too small to play linebacker in the league. Anyway, I mean, that's, um, you know, not a crazy weight for, for a Mike or, you know, for, for any linebacker um, that you would be scouting. He's fast enough to play. Well, um, I think he's athletic enough to play well, but he's in a Mike's frame. So he's got some flexibility. Uh, you, you heard, I think it was Goody talk about wanting, um, linebackers to be able to play all three positions within the halfway defense. And of course you have the positions that you like foresee for guys, you have positions that you want them to be able to do full time. But when you do start losing bodies, it's probably better to have your better guys able to play multiple spots than like, well, this is our backup will. And he only knows will, and this is our backup Mike. And he only knows Mike. And none of these guys can play any other different spot. You know, if you, if you need to have some flexibility there, should somebody turn an ankle or, you know, worse, um, didn't run agilities, but he ran them at his pro day and I can't find them. I, I don't know what to tell you there. Um, I would guess that they're fine. Uh, he didn't strike me as like, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. He has like 72nd percentile vert and 73rd percentile broad. I wouldn't be surprised if his agilities were kind of like that where they're good but not great and the only kind of great characteristic he has is speed it's a good one to have and it's fine because like i said there's nothing wrong with his jumps his vert and his broad are fine there's nothing wrong with them but they're not crazy bananas elite like his 40 time was i mean four four three at 233 pounds at six four is uh just banana land truly um it's it's crazy. It it is absolutely crazy. Um, ran like the wind, and explosive numbers were plenty impressive. Uh, good zone eyes, good feel for the passing game, and that's something that I think Quay Walker lacks. And I don't know how many people would really, um, uh, I don't know how many people would really argue with that, right? Because I think like Quay was drafted as this potential cover linebacker, and like we saw the pick six against the Bears, and that was all great and stuff, but. There are a lot of lot of things going wrong in the middle of that middle of the field passing defense, and I'm not willing to blame them all on the safeties in Devondre Campbell. I need Quay Walker to be better, and I think Peyton Wilson is better. Uh, and, and what I've seen from him in coverage is good. I, I like, like I said, I like his eyes. I like his anticipation. I like his awareness, understanding when people are entering his zone. Um, didn't play a ton of man really at at Penn, you know like manned up on a tight end or manned up on a running back. I didn't. That's not on his tape a ton it wasn't how they ran that defense at nc state and that's fine i mean he was doing honestly too a lot of pass rush um he, they line him up at defensive end plenty and that's something else that i'm, I'm going to talk about too is he can take on a block and he even set the edge like there were occasions certainly when he played the edge he played the 
the you know stand up end, whatever you want to call it, six technique, head up on a tight end, just outside the tackle, whatever you want to call it. He was playing that position, and I again, I mean, I just think it shows some flexibility, and it shows that they were ready for him to take on a blocker and engage. He's not always trying to run around somebody or trying to avoid a blocker. But that's the next thing in the pros. Oftentimes, you know, he's too fast for for it to matter. Whether whether or not, and I think it is one of the primary, and we will talk about it, I think it is one of the primary concerns with Peyton Wilson, whether or not he can take on a block, a lot of the times it doesn't matter because he's so fast and he's so quick and he's so smart and he is very, very smart that he just doesn't let the the offensive lineman block him. And you you would say, and and I would I would probably tell you that this is a credible thing to say. You would say, well, is that sustainable at the NFL level? You know, can can that can can you do that consistently and you know kind of survive? And I would say yes. I would say that that's largely doable because he's not just a good athlete. He's not just a, he's a good athlete by NFL standards. He's a great athlete by NFL standards. I mean, he's a 98th percentile Raz guy. We don't have agilities on that, but he's not just a freak for college. He's a freak for the NFL. So can he beat blockers to the spot in the NFL? Yeah, I think he can. Um, Would I like him to be able to take on guards? Yeah, that would be, that would be great, but he's not a perfect prospect or he wouldn't have the grade that I have on him. Um, can pass rush played some edge. I mean, he's a good blitzer. He really can go super high PFF grades. And then I've talked ad nauseum about PFF grades and sort of, you know, some of the, the things that we talk and talk about when we talk about PFF, which is you can have whatever opinion you want and that's fine. What I always see with a PFF grade is consistency. If you have a high PFF grade, those guys have two or three sometimes folks watching the same game, grading the players on every single play. So even if you're not going to like buy necessarily the rankings or the grading system or this, that, or the other thing, when I see a guy with a high PFF grade, to me, the one thing that tells me is he brings it on every play because they're being graded on every single play. So you're showing me 65, 70, 72, 73 snaps of good football or, you know, whatever, you know, I, I, he, anyway, I don't want to have the PFF debate every time I talk about this, but I see consistency good whatever um good ball production for a linebacker seven picks 13 pass breakups two fumble recoveries and a forced fumble um that is good not great like you'd like to see maybe a couple he's a five-year guy so you'd like to see maybe more on the fumble side but seven picks and 13 pass breakups like that's good production um cons he's an older prospect uh he's going to turn 24 before the draft and he's a five-year guy he's got an injury history Uh, He spent his first year at NC State rehabbing a high school knee injury and then missed most of 2021 with shoulder issues. Now, he claims in an interview that he's addressed that, and I'll I'll buy that to a degree. He says he's added weight. You can just look that up on NC State's roster. Um, Improved nutrition, things of that nature. He says, look, guys, I've been available for the last two years. I've been able to play. I've been able to go. That's also hard to argue with. It doesn't change the injury history, but it's, you know, it's, it's impressive. It's he, he said, I'm, I'm doing better and he is doing better. So you have to give that some credence. You have to, you know, whatever you have to agree that that's what's going on. Um, he's not your cl- classic take on blocks, Mike, he can do it, but it's not a strong suit. He's not, there's not a, a like, Oh man, look at him. Jack up this pulling guard. Like that's not all over his tape. Um, and, and there are linebackers that do that, but, that's not what you're seeing consistently where he blows up a fullback or, um, you know, a center tries to climb to me, he, he smacks him out of the way or, you know, stacks and sheds like that's, that's not what he does. Most of the time he beats the guy to the spot and he does it consistently. And he, I mean, he's good, but, um, if we're talking about weak points, I would say that's a weak point. Occasionally gets a little overconfident. I would say, um, he, he, he does occasionally tackle high and he'll allow some run throughs and he'll allow some extra yards where if he would have just tried to tackle him a bit lower, not tried to kill him, uh, that, that there would have been a shorter gain or a, a tackle in the case where it is. And he's a good tackler, but I mean, in the case where there are occasional broken tackles, I think sometimes it's going for kill shots and sometimes it's just tackling guys too high and being overconfident in your own abilities. Like you, there are some backs, some tight ends, some whatevers that you just, you know, 
get him at the knees, get him at the thighs. You don't have to go ankle diving, but you know, not, not going and grabbing everybody up around the shoulders is, is generally not um, going to work. And that would be one of the the cons that I would give with Peyton Wilson. The other, the last con I would give is that um, Peyton Wilson can uh, get got in play action. He can, um, he'll bite kind of hard. And um, you know, that, that reaction time where you have to robot and you have to get back that, does sometimes happen where, like I said, he, he gets got where it's, it's his guy, you know, on the inbreaker because he got sucked in on play action. And, and, and that's, it's not every time, but again, we're here, you know, we're talking cons. Um, we're talking about, you know, things that we don't love and, uh, uh, you gotta say something, I guess is, is all I'm trying to do, um, is, we're in the cons part, especially if it's my number one guy at a position. Uh, it's there has to be something to discuss, and that was something I noticed on film. Okay, that was something I noticed on film. Uh, Packer fit ideal, Mike body and a super athlete like they like. I think he's a great fit. Um, and part of that though, and 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 I'll put my hand up is like I'm a I'm I kind of feel the way I feel about linebackers and running backs. Um, I would have done what they did, frankly, with Blake Martinez. One contract, see you later. So Peyton Wilson being old, I don't care. If I get him for year 24, 25, 26, and 27, I'm good. You want to do a two, three-year deal after that if he's really good? I mean, linebackers can play till they're 30. That's fine. But I'm cool with, like, the Blake Martinez, Jake Ryan track where you just play, you know, their rookie contract. They're fine. They start. It's whatever. I think I would, I'll have a higher grade on Peyton Wilson than I had on both Jake Ryan and Blake Martinez, but I don't care that he's old because I'm looking at a linebacker generally as a one contract player. That's just the same with the running back. And I say that as a fan of a team that now has two second contract running backs on their, on their team and nobody else. Uh, it's fine, but, uh, it's just how I would do business. I don't know that it will be how they do business. A uh, smart kid could be the green dot. And and that's something that they don't have now. They might green dot Quay. Um, Wink Martindale, when he was the defensive coordinator of the Giants, green dotted Xavier McKinney. So um, I, I think that that part of it could be helpful. You know, who's a true Mike? People talk about a Mike. And, you know, I had mentioned Josie Jewell, Jerome Baker, although I wouldn't say he's necessarily a true Mike, but just guys that they could have gone out in free agency and got to sort of at least place hold that spot next to Quay if the plan is to let Quay run around and play Will, which I think it is and should be. Um, Peyton Wilson, I think, can be that guy. But again, older guy. Green Bay has cared, and sometimes they haven't, right? Christian Watson was a 50-year guy. Devontae Wyatt was older than a guy they would normally take that high. I think the COVID pandemic has changed some of their what they are or are not willing to do on older prospects. So that that exists. That's a thing. Um, you know, it's it's to be to be reckoned with or to be uh, to be noticed. Uh, and and that's why I think there's a chance with Peyton Wilson. Not in round one, but that's why I think there's at least a chance with Peyton Wilson. Um, as far as like the pick fit. I'd like to wait till 58 and see if he's there. Um, I would, I would like them probably in the first two picks to address uh, hopefully the defensive backfield and the offensive line in some form or fashion. You know, can I interest you in a Cooper DeGene at 25 and a Jordan Morgan in 41? Can I interest you in a Troy Fatanu at uh, 25 and a TJ Tampa in 40 at 41? Can I talk to you about things like that? And then, a Peyton Wilson at 58, that would be kind of where I would uh, hope that that would happen. The other thing is I would just say like Green Bay from sources love Edge Cooper. They're not, you know, it's hashtag lying season and they're not impenetrable sources or they're not perfect. Plus there's 31 NFL teams and 25 of them could love Edge Cooper. But I think Green Bay probably prefers Cooper to Peyton Wilson and has him on the top of their linebacker board as opposed to you know, my guy, Peyton Wilson. Overall, he is LB1 for me by the tiniest of margins. Edge Cooper is LB2 for me, and he's right there. Extremely similar grade and extremely similar overall rank. Um, I give him a solid second-round grade, and for me, he is player overall 49. Um, and that puts him, you know, between where Green Bay has a pick at 41 and where Green Bay has a pick at 58, almost perfectly. So, they pick him at 41. I go like this. They pick him at 58. You get a big fist pump and, you know, anything after that would be excellent. 
All right. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. If you are on the podcast side, there is a uh, link below to buy the Green Bay Draft Guide powered by Pack Report. Use promo code DAILY for 10% off. Check me out on X, formerly known as Twitter. I'm at Ross Luglum. Check us out over at Pack Report. Do everything you're supposed to do here on the Pack a Day podcast YouTube feed. Like, subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you can get every ounce of Packers content that you require on a daily basis. Have a great day, folks.